Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Powell, and I am the co-founder of Champions for Philanthropy. My co-founder, Michelle Mays, and I are thrilled that we could bring our third annual Most Valuable Philanthropist Super Bowl Awards in a reimagined virtual world. We are so grateful that you have all chosen to join us today for what is sure to be an insightful and exciting conversation. We are pleased to announce our phenomenal 2021 honorees, Terrell Owens, Michael Thomas, Justin Simmons, and Tony Orr. Unfortunately, Michael and Tony are unable to join us today, but we will share more about them later. Congratulations to all of our honorees and kudos for all the great work that you do to make the world a better place. We are so excited to continue our tradition of celebrating philanthropy and professional sports. Alicia and I launched Champions for Philanthropy in 2017 out of our shared desire to combine our two passions, sports and philanthropy. Over the years, we've witnessed the incredible works our clients do and the work of so many other professional athletes outside of the field. And we know that they are working hard to uplift those and empower communities, but we often see how their efforts get overshadowed by the box score or just overlooked altogether. So we decided to do something about it. First, we launched the Sport of Philanthropy blog to highlight charitable endeavors and social activism among professional athletes. Then we thought, why not shine an even brighter light on these phenomenal athlete citizens by honoring them through our Most Valuable Philanthropist Awards. Three years later, we are continuing the tradition. Our purpose today is to not only honor our current honorees, but to incorporate our past honorees in the conversation about using sport for social impact. Congratulations to Terrell, Michael, Justin, and Tony for your exemplary work in the community and for inspiring others to follow your powerful example. Today's event will feature an intimate conversation with Terrell Owens, led by the incomparable David Meltzer. And we will also hear from our current and former MVP honorees as Rob Baca, who's the recipient of our 2019 Community Champion Award, leads a conversation about the ins and outs of philanthropy in professional sports. Our hope is that we all leave here today with a few actionable ways we can come together in pooling our unique resources to make our communities even safer, healthier, more just, more financially secure, and perhaps most importantly, more compassionate especially after the rough year that we've all experienced. If you'd like to learn more about our work, please follow us on social media using the handle Champions for Philanthropy. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our 2020 community champion and a dear friend of Champions for Philanthropy, Dave Meltzer. David Meltzer is a co-founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as CEO of the renowned Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment Agency, which was the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire. David has been recognized by Variety Magazine as their Sports Humanitarian of the Year and awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. He is also the executive producer of the brand new Bloomberg and Amazon Prime television series, Two Minute Drill. His life's mission is to empower over 1 billion people to be happy. This simple yet powerful mission has led him on an incredible journey to provide one thing, value. And all his content and communication, that's exactly what you'll receive. As part of the mission for the past 20 years, he's been providing free weekly trainings to empower others to empower others to be happy. Dave? Thank you so much. And it's an honor to be back. It's always an honor to be with this group aligned with my mission to empower over a billion people to be happy. And I'm thrilled to honor Terrell Owens as well uh, and have this conversation. Um, Terrell, obviously, Pro Bowler, All Pro, Hall of Famer. Um, but what most people don't know beyond a great entrepreneur, one of uh, my favorite cabs is 81, uh, which he has partnered with the Lasorda family as well. And he also has a new podcast. So he's trying to compete with the playbook now. But get your popcorn ready with T.O. and Hatch. So this is a man that does it all through the desire that he must be what he can be. And uh, I want to, you know, give him his props because not everybody would show up for an hour during Super Bowl uh, to give back, even being honored. Uh, it's an honor to have you, Terrell. And I want to start there. You know, I've been blessed to be around some great Hall of Famers, <laughs> athletes with Lee Steinberg and Warren Moon as my partner in Sports One. And I think the most under or misunderstood thing about great athletes, especially, is that they are great athletes because they care more about other people than they care about themselves. And ironically, the better you are and the more honored you are, the less people understand how much time, 
energy, emotion that you need to give to others in order to achieve the success that you have. I always say, if people knew that 99% of the Hall of Famers that I knew give 90% of their time to other people, yet it takes 1% to do one little bad thing and everybody aggregates uh, the philanthropic efforts that you have into some negative component. How have you been able to deal through your career with all the sacrifice and investment that you've made into other, having to deal with that type of misunderstanding when you hear in the media about Hall of Famers, athletes, how they're self-centered or narcissistic, when in actuality, the majority of your life is to give back to others. And I know that from all the things that you're doing now and have done in the past. Uh, yeah, let me start off. Uh, it's Terrell. Terrell. Uh, <laughs> It's all right. No, no I'm the, I'm the think, name butcher, man. That's fine. <laughs> I was going to just call you T.O. Make it easy on me. <laughs> that works. Uh, I think first and foremost, I think the way that I was raised uh, by my grandmother and my mom, I think that had a lot to do with who I was kind of on the field and off the field. But I think most notably off the field. I'm obviously my my on the field persona obviously gets a, a lot of the recognition. Uh, but when you think about how the media has portrayed me in such a negative light. Um, I think it obviously has affected, you know, obviously, uh, again, the perception of who I am as a person, you know, amongst, you know, people that don't know me, business, fans, or what have you. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I, perception isn't reality for me. And um, I realize that. And, and obviously in business, you know, they say sometimes perception is reality, but that doesn't apply. And it's not applicable to everybody in every circumstance. And I thought I, throughout the course of my career, I was fairly uncriticized because of some of the things um, that I was doing, um, villa, that I was vilified for, uh, overly scrutinized for, that is now being celebrated and embraced uh, in the National Football League. When you think about the touchdown celebration, which I was known for, um, there were people you know, that were commentating, even players that went from the field into the booth that heavily criticized that, called me selfish. Um, call me a, a team wrecker um, to the point to where, you know, Skip Bayless has this, this nickname for me, Team Obliterator. Um, they said I was a distraction in locker rooms. All of these things were, were brought up because of the media. Um, but outside of that, I've always been a person and allowed that to deter really who I was, um, you know, from a character standpoint. And that's what enabled me to really flourish on the football field, no matter what was being said about me. And I understand, you know, they have a job to do. Um, but at the same time, I have a responsibility um, to that organization that I, that I signed to play with, to go out there and, and be the best football player um, that I could be. And I felt like I did that. That's what ultimately landed me into the Hall of Fame, despite the two snubs, um, you know, in 2016 and 2017. Um, but I, also, I equally have a responsibility knowing where I came from, um, what I've been able to accomplish by uh, being afforded the opportunity to play the National Football League. And that's obviously to, to motivate, to inspire, and to give back. And so with this award, I'm, I'm very humbled by it. Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity uh, to be able to represent champions of, of, of philanthropy. Um, again, not a lot of people. I don't do a lot of things for notoriety. There are a number of things that I, that I do. Um, on, a, in a, in a, on a philanthropic uh, threshold or standpoint that a lot of people don't know about. I just do it from the goodness of my heart. Um, but when you talk about uh, philanthropy, um, you know, for me, I didn't really know much about it growing up. I didn't have people giving back. Which I didn't know what it was. But, you know, when you talk about coaching and, and people instilling into athletes uh, who, they, who, who they ultimately become, um, I was one of those kids. There were a lot of people that basically instilled a lot of things uh, into me who allowed me to become, you know, Terrell Owens and obviously T.O. on the football field. So for me, perception isn't reality. Um, I understand the responsibility, as I alluded to earlier, uh, to, to, to give back. And so if I can share uh, some of what I went through, through with kids and that, that encourages them, that inspires them, that motivates them, then that's, I've done it. I feel like I've done a good job. Um, and obviously I want to shy a reserved uh, when I grew up. And I know there's a lot of kids in America that are just like me. Um, that wasn't four or five star athletes um, coming out of high school. Um, I was one of those kids. And so a lot of kids can get discouraged or be discouraged because of, you know, the, the great athleticism and the superiority of some of their peers around them. And they haven't really gotten to that level.
level yet. I was a late bloomer and I never really knew which route to take, uh, how to get there, but somehow, some way, um, I was able to really kind of f find a formula for myself. And I just really just kind of just uh, went, went to work and understood that if I wanted to be like some of those, my peers that were better than me. And then when I got to the professional, what the collegiate and the professional level, especially in the NFL, if I wanted to be, be like some of the greats and I played with a number of them, um, um, and most notably with the San Francisco 49ers, Jerry Rice, Steve Young, if I wanted to be like these guys, I had to put a lot of hard work in because um, I was definitely not on that level yet. And you also aligned yourself uh, not only with the greats on the field, but also off the field. You were a rookie the same year that Kobe was. You now honor him and his foundation, the Mamba Mamacita uh, Foundation, with your new apparel company, uh, Prototype 81. Uh, how do you choose who to help? You know, one of the things that I noticed from being a part of Lee Steinberg and with Warren Moon, uh, with our agency, the demands and the ass are unfathomable. They're almost to infinity. How do you choose who to help uh, when you're approached by so many people that need and ask for help from you? Um, That's a good question. Um, I honestly, I just kind of just try to use my, I guess, try to use a strong sense of discernment, um, my discretion. And I know there's a number of undeserved, undeserved, underdeserved um, and underprivileged kids out there um, that really don't, they don't know how to, again, map their levels of success. Uh, they don't know how to get there. Uh, they don't have a blueprint. And so if uh, someone like myself um, that I feel like have been in their shoes um, and now can be sort of like a, a compass for them, um, then that's, that's, what I, that's what I lend my, my time and my efforts and my likeness for. Um, I know that like I said, alluded to earlier that uh, a number of kids are just like me. They, they have no clue. They have no clue, no idea some are very fortunate to kind of be dialed in to, to have goals, set those goals and, and ultimately reach them. Um, but there's gonna be obstacles along the way. And there are those kids that really just have no clue at all. And I wanna be able to help those, those, those kids uh, as well as the others. Um, but it's, there's nothing like you know, helping someone you know, map their way out uh, and trying to navigate you know, through their younger years of life and ultimately want to get to their levels of success. Um, that they, that, that's really just kind of around the corner for them. Well, you know, as someone is viewed from afar, all the different charitable events that you put on, all the different charities that you support and also attend, you know, I always see you as top of the list and get so many invitations to support your associates, friends, and ex-players, foundations. Uh, you're always top of the list and I'm always, for me, looking for the true philanthropist, someone that's not looking for the recognition, that shows up without being paid, that is consistently sacrificing and giving. When you have your own businesses, you have your own family, and now you even have a podcast trying to compete against me, I'll forgive you for that deal. But uh, <laughs> I got to give it a listen, that's for sure. I think it's most important as I hand it off to Rob Vaca, the 2019 uh, champion himself, uh, that we recognize what you do and how you do it. And I know as someone who deals with the media all the time, that that is not who you are. Uh, it's very entertaining, uh, but your, your heart is so big uh, and you can see that on the field, but I wish people and today we're recognizing how big your heart is off the field. And I think it's even bigger than what you've proven to be on the field as my friend and my mentor, Rob Baca, who I'm gonna introduce right now, you're talking all heart, right there in the best looking jacket you'll ever see. Rob, take it away. Dave, it is so great to see you, man. I wish we were all in Miami like we were last year at the Champions for Philanthropy event. We were overlooking the intracoastal. The weather was probably 78 degrees. Now I get to be in my sports cave here. I got my sport coat on. I got no one here with me to show off my sport coat too. And let's get the elephant out of the room because I know there's a bunch of people on this Zoom that right now are judging me for my sport coat. Let's get it off, let's get it out. Let's agree that most of the people that are judging are probably men who would not be secure and feel good enough to wear this themselves. I wanna let you know I'm doing it for one reason. Number one and only reason, I gotta get out of the sweatshirt game, man. Sweatshirts have <laughs> 
oh, they've overtaken me the last 12 months. I want to get back to the sport coat. So now that we got the elephant out of the room, we can start. We have three spectacular human beings on this panel today. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to get inside their life. You're going to get inside their persona and how they see the world from a giving perspective. And the three guys I have, I have one legend and two superstars in today's game. As Dave talked with Terrell, he's a guy I've known for a few years. I met him through Ray Lewis, who, uh, if anybody's been to the Ray of Hope Foundation website or heard about what Ray's done, Terrell has helped Ray. He's a compatriot and a colleague of Ray's. And uh, if you don't know about what Terrell's done, he was a six-time Pro Bowler, a five-time All-Pro, 16 seasons in the league. He's from Alexander City, Alabama. He's an Alabama guy. Went to Chattanooga for college, so not far from me in Atlanta. And uh, he's a great human being. And as, as he said, I think he was uh, misrepresented in the media because today he would be the man, right? Today it's all about celebrations. It's all about what you do after a touchdown. It's all about maddenizing it. It's about take, flipping in the end zone, posing for the camera in the end zone. He would have been perfect in today's game. So the second guy we have is Justin Simmons. He made his first Pro Bowl this year. He intercepted four passes. He made more than 80 tackles. He's out of Northern Virginia, Manassas, Virginia. He went to Boston College. He's about to leave his first contract and enter his uh, second contract. I don't think he's 100% certain where he's playing next year, but he's been a Denver Bronco. He's a great human being. He and his wife, Taryn, have done some great things from a philanthropy standpoint. They started their foundation in 2020 to make an impact primarily on youth and underserved communities. They're doing all kinds of great things. We're gonna let him tell you about that. And then lastly, but not least, Grady Jarrett, like Justin, he is a Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for his team. Grady was last year's the 2020 Sports Philanthropist of the Year. He's from Conyers, Georgia. He went to Clemson. He was one of those guys who was really underrated. He was a fifth round pick. And in the Super Bowl for the Falcons, the infamous Super Bowl, the, the infamous 20 to 7 to 3 Super Bowl, he sacked Tom Brady three times. That's an incredible accomplishment. Grady Jarrett started Grady Gives. He's doing very similar things to Justin. I think the discussion is going to be fun around that. He's helping underserved communities. He's helping youth. He's doing things under the radar like all three of these guys are doing. So we're going to start out. First question is going to be for, for Terrell. And the question is, share with us as a Hall of Famer, as a guy who played a long time in the league, how does that help your platform for giving and has it helped you to make a difference? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's afforded me to do and uh, open a lot of doors for, for myself uh, from, a, I guess, uh, I guess business standpoint. Um, but at the same time, you know, being a Hall of Famer, um, obviously that's recognition in itself to be recognized, you know, amongst uh, just under 400 of the best athletes that ever played the game. Um, and again, I mean, I don't think you need to have uh, Hall of Fame or any of these accolades attached to your name uh, to give back um, or, or to motivate or inspire. Um, I think regardless of that, uh, of those accolades and things that I've uh, obtained or achieved, I will still be in a position uh, to give back because you think, you know, coming from a small town like Alexander City, uh, just under maybe 15,000 people, um, I realized not only uh, did I come from a small community and make it uh, to the National Football League. And there are a number of other guys that have come from small cities, schools, or what have you, and have become successful. And I know there are a lot of kids running around right now uh, in the yard or in their backyard playing basketball, football, whatever their love of sport may be, they, they're dreaming. They're out there dreaming right now. And so for me, I want to be able to create some type of blueprint, some format um, to help those kids get to those goals and so uh, at the end of the day that's part of my mantra part of who I am is to motivate to inspire and, and to give back and so again like I said I'm honored to be uh, a part of this uh this this uh, the nominees that's powerful it sounds like it comes naturally for you Terrell Justin same question for you tell us about how you've been able to leverage your platform you're in the league 
now for, you just completed your fourth year, I think. Tell us what you've been able to do through the last four years to get to the point where you, where you started your foundation last year and you can really leverage your platform. Yeah, you know, I think um, it's important to use, you know, this platform to show um, not only just kids, but just people in general, um, you know, the type of impact and leverage, um, you know, that you can have and as a person um, in any field, you know, obviously we we play the game of football because we love it. And um, it's been a passion, you know, for a lot of people since you've, since you were little, but I think the, the important thing to, to keep in mind is like, even through all the success throughout your career um, and making it to be a really small percentage of people that make it into the national football league, um, it's still important to, to leverage your platform um, to help and assist others in any, in any way, shape or form that you can. Um, you know, as, as Terrell said earlier, um, to motivate and to inspire. And so I think it's, um, I just think that's one of the, you know, most important things is to be able to leverage your, your platform and, and to use it to just inspire the next generation, um, you know, of kids and to, you know, inspire people that may look up to you in your sport, um, you know, as a, as a specific individual um, that look up to you and to just go out there and to show them that, you know, you, you happen to be more than just an athlete. Um, you, you know, you're, your and your inspirations go past um, what you do on the football field, and um, it's just important to be able to you know express that in the right ways and in terms of um, what you deem as fit to to giving back. You know, inspiration and impact are are critical, and I think all three of you men exhibit qualities that help you make impact and inspire people. So shifting to Grady Jarrett, Grady, you know, you once told me. If I can just touch one person, I don't have to, I'd love to touch a million people, but if I can touch one person and help impact their life, I feel like I've made a difference. So tell me through the last few years, how you've used your platform to make an impact. Uh, yeah, like you said, I think using your platform is definitely a blessing. And when you bless, and for me always, thought, you know, to whom much is given, much is acquired. So I felt that as a duty to me to use my platform to impact others in whatever way it may be, um, like whether it's, you know, doing my anti-bullying things or trying to figure out how to impact families during the holidays. And like you said earlier, when you introduced me, when I go talk to kids or um, a group of people, whatever it may be, everybody may not receive the message. And I'm big on spreading love and um, positivity. But if one person do receive the message, you know, that one person can, it can impact their lives forever. Cause we all can think about that one person that maybe sparked um, something in us to make us be, a, a, you know, make us be whatever it may be in life, you know, um, whether it's like a professional football football player, like, you know, me, T.O. and Justin, or um, a, a doctor or somebody like you, Rob, who's a philanthropist and a jack of all trades, you know, there's somebody somewhere amongst their life path that says something and sparks something in you to motivate to go better. So um, just over the past years, man, I've just been moving whatever God, you know, send me, man. I, I never like to to pinpoint down in myself, you know this about me, Rob, just into one one arena of why well, I only want to focus on this avenue. So, um, you know, so from anti-bullying, uh, feeding homeless, doing my youth camps, um, leadership groups, uh, just – just things to keep that mind sparking, especially on the youth, man, and just let them know there's so much good things out there for them and whatever they want to do. And uh, just being an avenue for that and um, just trying to, you know, serve them whichever way I can. Thanks. That's, that's awesome. And I, I, I knew that's a little bit of what you were going to say because we talked about it a lot. If you guys think about the concept of success and the concept of significance and impact, and you think about your lives, for Grady and Justin, you guys are still in what I would call the climb, meaning in your primary profession, which is football, you're on the climb. You're not on the back end. You're not near the end. For Terrell, he had his time and he did an unbelievable, uh, he handled that time unbelievably well and made a big impact on the game from a success standpoint. How did how do you juggle success and impact, success and significance? How do you juggle those things in terms of helping kids understand and see possibility? 
possibility in life, possibility in a career, not possibility in football, because I think the challenge for, for you three is that you've got a bunch of youth and kids that look up to you that somehow believe that they too are going to play in the NFL. And a dream is a good thing. And hope is a good thing. And battling toward a goal is a great thing. But the reality for us today on this Zoom call, we know that the odds of making it to the NFL are minuscule. So many things have to go right. So many things have to bounce your way. You have to have a village around you. And so for these kids, most of them are not going to the NFL. What can you do in your philanthropy, in your inspiration, in your impact to help them learn about the possibilities in the world? Terrell, gonna go to you on that. Well, I, I had a thought while you were doing that. I'm gonna be silly for a minute. Um, I mean, I think, I guess it could be measured. We're gonna use your jacket as, a, as an example here right now. I mean, you said that you've had to juggle all, uh, through all those sweaters and hoodies or what have you, and you got to this shiny, this shiny jacket right here. I mean, that could be a, a blueprint, a format to success because something had to inspire you and motivate you to feel good about yourself to, to rock this jacket today. So it could be, uh, I guess it could be something similar uh, as, as whatever kind of motivated you, inspired you to, to, to bring out this shiny jacket today. It could be said, you know, for a lot of kids, uh, you know, we're just, I guess we're, we're used as disciples, you know, um, for these kids. And so when you think about um, what, what Justin has done and Grady has done and myself, um, and then, you know, the, the media, they all highlight certain guys, you know, that have, you know, who they think have done, you know, charitable things and they are put them at the forefront. But I, I mean, me not knowing these two guys, I haven't really heard much about, you know, what they've done or what have you, but the fact that you guys have recognized, you know, us and, and, and nominated us, is, you know, like I said, for me, it's humbling. Uh, it's very, uh, it's a grateful situation. So I'm, like Grady said, too much, too much is given, much is required. And I've used that uh, a number of times. And so for me, um, you know, giving back should be effortless. It's just like us playing football. It's just like us giving, giving our all, being on a practice field or during the course of a game. Um, a coach shouldn't have to tell you to hustle. That's effort. And so for me, giving back, it's the same thing. It's all about want to. It's all about who you are on the inside. And it should be effortless. And so, um, like I said, me having the opportunity to, to do it, like I said, regardless of this or not, um, I'm still going to continue to give. And like I said, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to be, you know, on the panel with, with these two young gentlemen. So um, I think we're all going to do the best that we can do. And, and that's great. And I'm sure Justin can attest to, you're not going to be able to touch everybody. You can give a message, you can talk uh, till your tongue turns blue, uh, but not everybody's gonna be receptive to that message. Um, but there's, like I said, if you're doing things the right way, people won't hear your mouth, they'll hear your heart when you're speaking. And that's what we wanna do with a lot of these kids because you know, I know for me, I wasn't, like I said, football was never on my radar when I grew up. I played every sport, but as far as football, the National Football, football League, uh, the NFL, you know, as far as that being my goal, that was never, ever on my radar. Um, but I'm fortunate and blessed to have just kind of really tapped into my skill set. And I talk about something called my three D's. That's desire, dedication and discipline um, to be sitting here as a Hall of Famer today. When I got nominated for the Hall of Fame in 2016 and I reflected back on how I got to the point of being nominated, just like I'm being nominated for philanthropy, I thought about what got me there. That was my desire. That was my dedication and that was my discipline. And so for everybody, I mean, we're just trying to give back and put those kids that don't have any clue, uh, don't have a roadmap to get to, to their levels of success, whatever that may be, that's what we're here for. That's powerful. Thanks, Terrell. I really appreciate that. Um, some quick numbers, 346 pro football Hall of Famers. Terrell's one of them. Just let that sink in. So back to you, Justin. You started the foundation last year. I know that one of the cornerstones of your work is youth development, education, um, at-risk youth, equitable pro programs to give kids a shot. Tell us about how you see the next few years going 
as it relates trying to make an impact on on kids and showing them what's possible? Yeah, um, I've always been a firm, you know, believer in, you know, giving back and, you know, pouring into our youth. And I think the biggest reason is because, you know, our youth is our future. And so um, when you look at it from that standpoint, investing into them is uh, is a no brainer for me. You know, I can remember when I was a kid, um, you know, having dreams and aspirations of doing, you know, a whole bunch of different things and, and playing in the NFL is probably the biggest one. If it wasn't for a few individuals in my life that, you know, invested into me, whether that be financially, um, you know, giving me an equal opportunity to do things maybe some of my peers um, could do and I couldn't, um, investing into me in terms of just educational, you know, listening to me, hearing, hearing me out, um, giving me a, a platform to kind of educate myself and things in that, in that, in that nature, um, that there, there's no telling where I would be today. And so um, I just, I know the importance of investing, investing in, and in listening to um, our youth. And that's, that's really the whole reason behind it. And, you know, especially with, with so much going on in today's world. And I mean, realities that people have known, you know, it to be in part of their families for, you know, 400 plus years, you know, talking about, you know, racial inequalities and systemic racism and things in that nature. I think the thing that's been really eye opening for me the past, you know, couple of the past year and having conversations with our youth is, um, you know, how much what's going on in our world today, just via social media with things that have happened with, you know, people like Jacob Blake, um, and, you know, George Floyd and everything that's been happening, you have conversations with our youth, you see how impacted um, they are by these things and what they're saying about, um, you know, law enforcement and what they're saying about their own communities and what they're saying about their families. And um, it's heartbreaking to see, you know, kids at such a young age have those difficult conversations. And so, um, you know, you want to be able to help inspire them to be able to make change in a positive way. And that's just something that, you know, um, I'm just thankful for because I've, in, you know, just being in the NFL and I know, um, you know, both Grady and, and, and Tara were hitting on it earlier, but just being in the NFL and having this platform, it does give you the resources to be able to reach out and to have certain people to partner with and to help you reach um, dreams and aspirations that you have, you know, concerning off the field, um, you know, off the field, real life issues. And so our youth um, is obviously one of my biggest passions and it's always something that I'm going to be looking to push, um, especially while I'm in the league, but definitely while I'm out of it as well. I think it's great that the three of you and so many others have a chance to make an impact, to interact with so many people and to touch so many people because I think even when, when Terrell was playing, certainly when I was growing up, without social media, without technology, without phones, without connectivity, there was no way for professional athletes to interact with a lot of youth or a lot of people, period. You know, you'd literally, you'd have to run into somebody on the street. I mean, Terrell can probably tell you, he did not play in the age of as much connectivity we have today. And it, it's different. You have a chance to make a much bigger, much greater impact. Here's kind of a, a difficult question. And I'm shifting gears to make sure we, we get it all in in our time. We have a little less than 20 minutes left. There are lots of reasons why people give. I don't know if you have ever heard these reasons, but if you've ever gone to a charity event and you've seen a live auction, you can kind of see all the reasons, some authentic, some inauthentic, as to why people give. So you have an auction item, a live auction, picture being at a charity event. You have the person that's bidding on an item because they so love the cause. They want to change the world. They brought their checkbook they want to help. And it doesn't even matter what the item is. They just want to help. The next person is bidding on the item. And they want everybody to know that they have a bunch of dough and they're going to raise their hand high every time because they want to be socially accepted. You've got another person bidding and they're bidding a bunch because they want to get a tax deduction and a write-off. So the question for you guys is, how does giving, being philanthropic, using your platform play into the notion of pure generosity versus business? 
Does business come into play for you guys? It's not a trick question. Does building your brand come into play for you guys? And how does that fit into the generosity that you authentically feel? Grady, we're going to start with you. So, Rob, I think that's a good question. And I think it first starts with, you know, where your heart is in it. You know, when there's so much um, money and resources being involved, when there, when there are charity events, things have been, or, you know, whatever, there's donations and um, taking money, this and there. Of course, business has to be taken in account for the right way for, you know, as you know, there's a million different, you know, ways to, you know, properly, you know, put everything on the books or whatever. But as long as your heart is in the right place, I think that's the most important thing. And whatever somebody sees that, um, it, you know, whether they feel like you're doing this for, for this or, you know, you're doing this for that, I think um, that don't matter. Because, like, even when I was, like, selected one pay man of the year for my team, it was, like, it was a surprise to me, and it, but it felt good to me. But I also weren't doing the things in the community just to be named Walter Payton in many years. It wasn't like, I'm going to do this, this, and that so I can get this award. It was like, that's a byproduct of the things that I do that came naturally. So it was like, as long as your heart is in the right place, I don't think, you know, we can sit here and ponder on what if and what this and what that person think about this and that um, as in, in regards to um, being the person that's, uh, you know, you know, in the, what was like me or my, you know, myself, whatever, or whoever about head of the foundation, like worrying about what other people got to say about it, like um, thinking they just doing it for passing the back or just to look, look good in the public eye. If you know in your heart of hearts that, you know, you're doing things the right way and you make an impact with the next person think, I mean, you're doing it for your cause, you know? And um, so obviously making sure business is done in the right way is, you know, that has to be done. That's just being responsible. But as far as the other extra stuff that come with it, you know, we can cut it, split it however you want to. As long as your heart is in the right spot, man, and um, you'll be blessed for it. And uh, if it's not in the right spot, I think, you know, that's when you find the people who end up getting exposed for it because it's not who it's not it's not who that person is, you know. So um, so definitely you you want to move and move, move in the right way because it, good, it always come to life. Outstanding response. I think I just saw three three judges popped up. All were holding tens up in the air for that response. <laughs> Terrell, how about you, man? What do you think about branding and business and giving? No, I think what he said at the end there, uh, the latter part is like what's done in the dark will soon come to light. So um, if it's done for the right reasons or not done for the right reasons, um, obviously, like I said, there are things in place where th there, you, you're, there are consequences will follow. Um, so for me, um, I've been in that situation before. I mean, there's a lot of paperwork and loops and hoops that you have to jump through to make sure, you know, everything is documented and it's legit. Um, but at the end of the day, I've always lended really kind of my, my celebrity status, my name and my likeness to a, a lot of other people's charitable organizations. You talk about Ray and what he's done. Um, there's an, I, I trust me, I'm, there's so many, uh, guys, athletes that I've participated uh, in as far as their charitable events, I can't even name them all. Um, but that's me giving back. That's a choice for me. I don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I did it because I wanted to. And then obviously, like I said, I'll get some, uh, I'll check and see what their, what their, char their charitable organization uh, is about. If it's to my liking, if it's something that I want to put my energy towards, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to involve myself. Um, and it, sometimes it's not always uh, financial. It's not always a financial inv uh, involvement. It's just me actually being there to help support. Um, but, you know, that's part of branding. Um, that's, that's part of really kind of making a, I guess, a living, if you will. Um, but like I said, it should be effortless. Um, it's not something that, you know, you can get Buku Rich uh, uh, doing. There's nonprofit uh, organization that there's profitable uh, organization that you can attach yourself to. So it's all about what you would like to do. And at the end of the day, there has to be an accounting for everything. Otherwise, like I said, the IRS, they will get you. Um, but for me, you don't want to get yourself in that situation. And, and I just try to separate myself from that. So all I, I, to, to basically just clear yourself of any wrongdoing, if you know you're doing it from the right place and obviously from your heart, um, just like I said, for me, somebody called me for a charitable uh, event. They want to become support. I have, nothing, I have nothing to lose with that. 
whomever is throwing those events, that's their problem. Um, so for me, when it comes to branding, um, I think the NFL and the things that I've done on the football field, that has done more than enough for me. And so obviously with my personality, when it comes to marketing and creativity, uh, things of that nature, um, then I can do a great job of that myself. But again, those opportunities will, will, will come about. And so like I said, with the influx of social media platforms today, like I said, I don't necessarily need that charitable platform to, to, to brand myself. Um, but again, there's, a, like I said, there's profitable organizations and there's nonprofit. Um, so you just have to find which you would want to align yourself. Great, great insight. And I think insight that more people need to hear and more athletes need to hear because most of the athletes I work with right out of the gate think that they need to have their own foundation. And so what I'm saying here is I'm not advocating not to have your own foundation, but there are 1.5 million charities in the United States. Right. So we don't need more charities for more charities sake. We need more people to be generous. We need more people to be willing to make an impact. And whether you help 20 other charities like you've done, maybe it's 200 charities, Terrell, mm -hmm. or you have your own foundation, it's not about the flag. It's not about your banner. It's not about your logo. It's about, as Grady said, what do you have in your heart? What do you have to give? And are you willing to make an impact? And if you're willing to do those things, everything else sort of takes care of itself. Now you can't be disorganized and be all over the place, but you don't, you don't, you shouldn't have your own foundation and you shouldn't not have your own foundation. You should determine, am I motivated and inspired? Is my heart telling me to be generous? So right. from that perspective on what Terrell said and, and Grady said, Justin, how do you feel about this concept? Give us your perspective. Yeah, I think, I think they both, uh, you know, both T.O. and Grady um, hit it right on the head. And um, if there's anything I'd follow up on, um, you know, Rob, it would be exactly what you were just talking about. You know, um, I spent the first uh, four years of, of my career um, before launching my foundation, um, just going to other other teammates, foundational events, other, you know, foundational events, um, you know, that you happen to just be invited to or you want to be a part of, um, you know, throughout my first four years. Um, just because I wanted to help and I still was unsure what I wanted to do. Um, and then once I, once I hit the end of my four years and after time, you know, sitting down, talking with my wife, talking with, you know, multiple people, making sure I wanted to do it the right way. Um, I ended up establishing my own foundation, but I did and establish my foundation to uproot others. Um, you know, as Tio and, and Grady alluded to earlier, I think that, you know, one of the biggest things in, in, in being in the, in the national football league and, um, you know, having a little bit of a notoriety is that a lot of the times, you know, people want to just use your name and your likeness to just promote, um, you know, a certain agenda that they may have. And from a foundational standpoint, um, you know, I, I won't, won't speak for those guys, but I, I, I think I can say with some positivity that that's not, you know, what we do it for. And um, a lot of the times, when you have the opportunity to, um, you know, to partner with with certain foundations, um, you do it, you know, with your name and your likeness because you know that um, it's shining a light on a, a specific spot um, that you just feel is, is is important in your world or in, in in people's worlds that matter to you. And so, you know, for, from my foundational standpoint, it's not even the fact to uplift or uproot, um, you know, other people that are doing great work with our youth. Right? It's to help partner with them. Like, you know, I'm going to attach my name, you know, to this, I'm attached my name to this. And so um, maybe I'm bringing in a new type of revenue just because people support me in football. And now they'll see other great organizations doing work, um, doing great work with our youth. And then there's immediate partnership, you know, there with that. And so um, there's a lot of different avenues, you know, as it was alluded to earlier that you can walk through when you're talking about foundations and what you want to do and this that, and the other and I just think you know as it was said earlier um, as long as your heart's in the right place and you're doing it from a standpoint of you know what's really important to you and what really matters to you the rest will take care of itself and you'll always find yourself in the in the right position great insight I'm gonna I'm gonna close us we're, we're about to wrap up I'm gonna close us with a concept that I hope everybody will take away with them 
You do not need to be an NFL player. You do not need a social platform that's significant in terms of size to be quietly generous. You don't need the spotlight on you. You don't need to tweet or take pictures of you at a homeless shelter to make an impact on the world. And there are lots of little stories. I know Terrell and Justin have dozens of them, if not hundreds, maybe thousands of times they admitted an impact on somebody and there were no cameras and they didn't tweet about it and they didn't take photos and show themselves at a shoot soup kitchen. But I wanna uh, call and shed light on something that happened last week because it's relevant to Grady's life. Some people know that in the draft, door, actually during the draft and, and Terrell and, and Justin, think back about draft day and being with your family and what that was like and the nerves. Well, during draft day, Grady thought he was going to go in an earlier round. The rounds clicked by. He fell. He felt pissed. He felt a lot of emotions. At the same time, his house caught on fire. During the draft, in his house, at the party, his house caught on fire. And the family was displaced. And that became a big, uh, a big piece of his giving going forward and that history Last week, we found out that a young boy in Athens, Georgia, a boy named Taden, he's 12, he lost his entire family to a house fire. And Grady, without spotlight, without tweets, he sprung into action. He bought this young boy Super Bowl tickets. The boy's never been to an NFL game. He bought him plane tickets and Super Bowl tickets. He called him. And he made a massive impact on this little boy's life. And he's going to stay in touch with him. He wants to try to make uh, an impact that's even bigger than going to a Super Bowl because that won't take away the pain beyond Sunday. But these are the kinds of stories that Justin and Terrell and Grady live in every day. And we can too. Grady, you want to say 30 seconds worth of something about that experience? and what you did with Tayden before we wrap up? Yeah, man, just being able to talk to Tayden um, on FaceTime was uh, very touching for me. And, you know, I you know, I, I did go through a house fire, but, you know, nothing to the magnitude of um, what he's going through as a young boy, losing his family. Fortunate enough, everybody was safe in mind. And, um, you know, all material stuff can get put back. But just to be able to provide a little relief in a hard time for him, give him a, mer a memorable um, weekend, but um, like you said, man, this is the work is just gonna just getting started with 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 this kid, man. He's gonna need a lot of support going forward, and um, uh, you know, I plan to be there, um, you know, whether it's at a, as a big bro role, whatever it need need be, just to you know give him some support going forward, and um, hopefully, you know, we all can, you know, just learn something from the strength that he gonna show, and uh, as he continue to grow and continue to follow him as we, as as he becomes a young man, but um. So just trying to spread some form of positivity. But um, like I say, the, the work is just just getting getting started with the, the support that he's going to need. So but definitely speaking with him, was, it was it was definitely touching. Thanks for sharing that. Well, thanks for sharing time with us, everybody that's on the Zoom and anybody that will see this in the future. I, I'd like you to take away, if you take away anything, the kind of words that Terrell, Justin and Grady have used here. They've used words like positivity, kindness, love, impact, significance. Think about those words. I'm a big believer that you become what you feed yourself and what you tell yourself. So tell yourself positive things. Don't tell yourself negative things. Don't feast on negativity. Don't eat rumor. Eat positivity. Thanks a lot for spending time with us. Back to you, Alicia. What a great conversation. We appreciate you all sharing your reasons for giving and joining us today. Thank you to Dave, Rob, and Grady. And thank you and congratulations to this year's honorees, Terrell Owens, Justin Simmons, Michael Thomas, and Tony Yor. Thank you also to our team at Champions for Philanthropy, especially Christian and Jamie for all of your help in making today's event possible. Before we go, we want to acknowledge two of this year's honorees who were unable to join us today. Michael Thomas, our 2021 Most Valuable Philanthropist Award winner, currently plays for the Houston Texans and is involved in countless charitable initiatives off the field. 
His community involvement spans from Miami to California and his hometown of Houston. He created the Big Plays program for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Miami, hosted Camp Mike T to expose kids to unique opportunities through financial literacy and college prep programs, partnered with the food partnered with Food for the Hungry, and traveled to Haiti to help raise funds to reduce poverty in the country. His efforts in developing youth mentorship initiatives earned him the NFLPA Community MVP Award during both the 2015 and 2016 seasons, and we are excited to celebrate him today for his continued work. Our 2021 Community Champion honoree is Tony Orr. Tony advocates for the It Just Takes One philosophy, which teaches communities that it just takes one to open a door and put a child on the path to a great future. Tony is currently regional vice president for the Southeast region of Boys and Girls Clubs of America and has made quite a name for himself as a fundraiser there. He was responsible for the largest individual gift of $10 million given to the organization in its 155 year history. In addition, Tony has been instrumental in the success of an annual Boys and Girls Clubs golf tournament in Charlotte, North Carolina, where he has helped Mays raise $1 million to date. Great work, guys. At Champions for Philanthropy, our goal from the beginning has been to help athletes use their platform to help others. This past year has been difficult, and although we're all in the same storm, we are in different boats. Emerging from such a devastating time, we are working to help as many athletes as possible, help as many people as possible. In 2021, Champions for Philanthropy is embarking on a mission to get 10,000 athletes to make the pledge to become a champion for philanthropy. What does being a champion for philanthropy mean? It means that athletes, professional, college, high school, and everyone in between will take the pledge to make an impact in the community and around the world. To learn more about this exciting initiative, visit championspledge.com. Again, to all of our panelists and attendees, thank you for joining us today. Please be sure to follow us on social media at Champions for Philanthropy to keep up with our work and find out about our future events. Take care, everyone. Thank you.